You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Gym owner and entrepreneur Aaron Nash brings his results-based fitness and nutrition knowledge to listeners with a no-nonsense approach. This is Platinum Fitness with your host, Aaron Nash. Aaron will talk about his own journey, struggles, and successes, and how you can get motivated and get results. Please welcome the host of Platinum Fitness, Aaron Nash. Welcome to Platinum Fitness. I am your host, Aaron Nash, coming to you live on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio and iHeartRadio and all kinds of other stuff. So here's what I got for you today, guys. Today is my final show in our uh, rental house. Okay, so we close tomorrow morning, um, assuming Chase pulls their head out of their other end. Uh, So we're going to get that taken care of today. Hopefully we'll be closing in the morning and then moving in this weekend and through Monday and Tuesday of next week. And then next week will be the first show from the new office, the new house, the new setup, the new station. And then that following weekend, I will be at Miami for the bachelor party, which I'm just hoping I come back from. That's really, that's really my goal is to uh, come back and not have any stories that I'm disappointed with of myself that I remember. So what we're going to do today, guys, what we're going to do today is I want to talk to you about something that really is probably my biggest pet peeve with all businesses ever in the history of ever. And it's the easiest thing to fix. And I don't understand why most people don't do it, but we're going to talk about it today. Here's the deal is if you are in charge of doing something for somebody else and you have a business and you fail to communicate when you screw up, you are the worst kind of human. And this is what I mean. So if you're actually going to do something for somebody, if you have a business, let's say you have a product and you do not know how to communicate, whether you're doing a good job or a bad job, communication is key. And what I mean by that is I'm going to tell you the current story that I'm going through with our good friends over at JP Morgan and Chase. So we have a, a wonderful individual by the name of Tony who works somewhere in Illinois. I'm calling him out by name because I'm hoping that somebody from Chase is listening and will fire him. The reason I want him fired is because he communicates like a four-year-old girl with a crush. And what I mean by that is if you're giving somebody the amount of money that we're giving down to, to close on this house, I believe that communicating, whether you know what's going on or not, is a key. So like if somebody calls you and let's say they're the person, you know, putting the money down on the house and you don't have the, uh, the huevos to call them back or communicate with them, whether you drop the ball or not, right? Here's the deal is if I screw up with somebody, I had a client, okay, I had a client, this is a little rabbit trail for you, but I like telling stories. I had a client who we were mischarging his daughter. His daughter was 17. We asked for a student ID. She never brought one in, but we really shouldn't have had to ask for one because she's 17. So obviously she's in high school, right? Um, Unless she's Doogie Hauser, there's like a 99.99% chance that she was in high school. Totally 100% our fault. The father realized on his bank statement that we were mischarging them. He got very upset. And so I personally called him to apologize to find out how we could make it right. I gave him a couple options of how to make it right. And by the end of the phone call, here's what he said. To me. Is he said, you know what? It's very rare that a business owner will actually get on the phone and call somebody and admit that they screwed up and then give options of how to fix the screw up. And he goes, that just earned you my business. He goes, I wanted to cancel. He goes, but you know what? You took care of that like a man. You admitted that you did something wrong. You gave me options on how you wanted to rectify it so that you were happy. And he goes, that's a huge, huge step. And I realized right there that I think that that's something that's overlooked. So same thing with my current situation. Now, could could our our, our good friend T-Bone over at Chase, could he have called and said, hey, I know that you guys have been pre-approved for months. And I know this process is pretty much a formality at this point. 
And I know that I've asked you to now put more money down with less of a loan. So I know that this is not a problem. I just straight drop the ball and I'm lazy and I'm going to get this done as fast as I can. And I'm really sorry that it's taking this long. Uh, this is a hundred percent on me. It's my fault. I take full responsibility for that as a, as a fellow person in business and owner, I would immediately respect that. I would be like, you know what that take, that actually takes some, uh, some huevos to do that. And that takes a lot of respect and a lot of courage. And that shows leadership that you're willing to take your responsibility for when you make a mistake. So guys, no matter what business you're running or what it is that you do, whether you're in sales, whether you're um, in marketing, whether you work at any job whatsoever, communication is the number one thing. And if you screw up, own it. Don't blame someone else. Don't try to find a story. Don't make stuff up. Just own it. Just take it and own it. Even if it's 100% not your fault, that's okay. You can still own it and just be like, you know what? I'm going to take fault for this. I'm going to find out exactly what happened. I should have been checking on this better or I should have been doing this better. And if I would have done a better job, you wouldn't have been put in this situation where now you're upset. So I'm going to take full responsibility. And I'm going to try to make this right. Here's how I'm going to try to make this right. Please give me some time while I make this right. And then communicate back. And that's what I think is one of the most important things that is overlooked in today's business, especially down in Southwest Florida. And I've said this before, but if you're from, if you're a, a somebody from the Midwest and you have somewhat of a work ethic, you can work 80% as hard as you did in the Midwest down in Southwest Florida. And you're immediately a rock star because everyone's goal down here is just to do the very minimum, not to get fired. It's not to do a good job for the sake of doing a good job. What's really funny is on the other side of this coin with the house is our construction manager for Pulte, Steve, who, if anyone from Pulte is listening, what an incredible site manager this guy has been. Talk about communication, P gives us his personal number, updates us whenever he can, totally understands when something goes wrong with some other part of the company, he takes responsibility, he makes sure that we're okay, he makes sure that we're happy, he makes sure he's there to answer any questions, went above and beyond to make sure that we had a great experience. And all of that stems from communication. And what's funny is the sales lady for Pulte, I've, I've wished death on multiple times due to her incompetence. But because of this guy and his ability to take responsibility, take ownership, and take charge of the situation, I actually cannot wait to give him the best possible score and review that I possibly can when his survey comes in. Like, I hope that he gets a raise and he gets admiration from the entire company on how good of a job he did because he really did that good of a job. And the only difference between the two, because there was both, there was mistakes made by both companies, but the difference between the way that the Tony from Chase handled it and the way that Steve from Pulte handled it, Steve communicated, Tony didn't. So it didn't matter what the screw up was. The only real difference between them was the communication. And I think guys, that no matter what you do, if you do something wrong, communicate. If you accidentally screw up, tell people, take responsibility, move on, figure out a way to fix it, and then follow through with how you said you were going to fix it. And if you do those things, there's really nothing that can go wrong for you. Um, because no matter what happens, you're not going to be trying to hide something. You're not going to be trying to do things last minute. You're not going to be trying to rush, rush, rush. You're going to be just trying to do the best by the person that you're communicating with. And if you do that with everybody you meet, you're going to be successful no matter how you approach your life. Okay. I promise you, if you learn how to communicate, you learn how to take responsibility and you learn how to problem solve, you are going to be successful because ultimately that there's just no other way around it. Now, this show today, let's talk about this for a minute, okay? So what we're going to talk about today is in the next segment, I want to go over your thermostat. And I was listening to, uh, I've been listening to a lot of podcasts lately because mainly I'm trying to do two things at once. I'm trying to learn for myself and I'm also trying to get better at this whole audio experience. So that's why I listen to a lot more podcasts now than just audible books, mainly because audible books just over the last month or so have bored me to tears. Whereas the podcasts have really picked that up in the entertainment side of things. So what I want to talk to you guys today about is thermostat knowing your worth, because that's a phrase that gets thrown around a lot. And I want to go over that phrase. Why loyalty is the most undervalued resource and ego. Focus on what you do, not what you think you can do. And what I want to do is I want to cover all of these things for you because I really think that they're going to be incredibly important to you, that they're going to add value to you throughout the show. Guys, remember, as always, uh, if you want to help me out tremendously, if you can give us a follow on iHeartRadio or go to boldbravemedia.com, find my show under self-help, give us a like, give us a follow, give us a heart. 
uh, write a little comment if there's an episode that brings you value. Um, it, it goes a long way. I know I got I get emails and Facebook messages from you guys quite a bit. Um, I've started to get some Instagram messages as well. Uh, so if you guys want to follow me on those platforms and message me things about the show or if you have any questions or you want help, um, I'm always here to help you guys. I, I think the number one thing that most people don't understand is that I enjoy – uh, the, the nuances and the nitty gritty of, of, of business. Uh, it is, it is really one of my passions that I have become, you know, really excited about recently. So if there's something that you're not quite sure on or something that you want help on, I offer the information freely. Uh, and if you follow me on Facebook, you're going to find out why, right? So I, and I made this yesterday in, in, a, in one of my live videos is, I like giving information for free because realistically, I know 99% of the people aren't going to do it. So I'm going to win regardless. It's not like I'm going to give them a secret that is going to be life changing and that they're going to just like steal my business from me. Like, no, I want everybody to do better. I want everybody to succeed. I want everybody to take whatever it is they do to the next level, whether it be your health and fitness, whether it be your career, whether it be your finances, whether it be your relationships, like we all have areas that we want to work on and like, I just want to be able to help you if there's an area that I feel that I can help you at, right? Now, I'm going to tell you this right up front. There's a lot of areas I probably won't ever give you advice because I'm not very good at them, right? Like, there's just some areas in my life where I don't think that I'm competent enough to give great advice, but I can point you to somebody who does. Um, and, and luckily for me, I like to surround myself with people who are very good at certain things in their life. I have some incredible people in my life who are incredible at relationships. I have some incredible people in my life who are amazing with finances. I have some incredible people in my life who are awesome with, um, you know, raising their kids and being a great family member and being a great teammate. I have some incredible uh, people who work, I work with and who, what they do is, you know, how they lead and their leadership qualities, their professionalism, their demeanor. Like I have so many great people around me that if there's something that I don't feel hundred percent confident that I can help you with, I can point you in the right direction of somebody who can. So always make sure that you're reaching out to me guys. This show today is going to be great. I want to get back, get some gratitude going, get that thermostat going. We're going to be right back. This is platinum fitness radio. I am your host, Aaron Nash coming to you live on BBM global network and tune in radio. Stay tuned. The earliest human societies worshipped a female goddess. Little is known about this time because we did not always have a written recorded history. It was around 3100 BC when the Sumerians invented the first written language and everything that preceded this time is prehistory. The prehistorical record includes all of women's unwritten history from 30,000 BC to the time that men began achieving political power around 3000 BC. Male feminist artist Kimberly Berg maintains a strong position in educating and inspiring both men and women through his devotional art to the goddess in all women. Studying their history is paramount to understanding who women were and who they would become later living in a patriarchal society. To learn more about this important time in our history, go to www.isisrising.net. Do you ever wonder why certain things are happening in your life? How to start a business or a new direction? Need answers? Astrologer Bonnie Perbula can help you reveal your true self and gain strength and focus so you can achieve greater joy and success. Working with a natal birth date, time, and location, Bonnie brings out qualities to aid you in getting the best from your life. She can help you unlock dormant traits to bring you greater awareness. Bonnie also conducts public speaking engagements to educate aspiring astrologers on their journey to the stars. A gifted artist bonnie bridges her talents and recently launched a line of astro bears uniquely created in colors of individuals astrology charts she also makes one-of-a-kind necklaces of crystal beads and woven thread to learn more about the world of bonnie perbula go to bonniegperbula.com and for astrology consulting visit astrologyconsultants.com or call or email her at 808-526-1536 or bonniegp at aol.com Welcome back to Platinum Fitness. I am your host, Aaron Nash, coming to you live on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. So what I want to talk to you about today, as always, we want to start this show with a little bit of gratitude. And today, I want to give a big shout out to uh, my fiance today. Um, you know, she has been absolutely amazing during this process of getting ready to move. She's packed practically the entire house by herself because of uh, some of the issues we've been having with uh, employees and with our team and with getting everything figured out and just with some of their personal issues. And um, so I want to make sure that I, I give her a big thank you. 
because I know she won't listen. So if you guys are listening, you want to tell her that I did give her a shout out, that'd be awesome so that she actually knows I did it. Uh, here's one of the things I want to talk to you about today, though, is your thermostat. And I was listening to a podcast about this a little while ago, and it's something that really resonated with me. And here's why. So it talks about how you, you, we all have like a thermostat inside of us, right? And, and no matter what area of our life, our, our thermostat is set to a certain temperature. If we start going too far below, so like, let's say, you know, your thermostat is set for, you know, 75 degrees, right? And let's, let's equate it to health and fitness. Cause that's really what we do. So let's say you're 75 degrees as you work out four times a week, you eat well, five days a week, five and a half days a week. And that's where your thermostat's set. But let's just say your, your thermostat starts to run a little low, right? So you start to go down to, and now you're only eating well three days a week. You're only working out a couple times a week. You start to feel your body go, wait, this isn't normal. This isn't what I'm used to. And you end up, you know, getting back on track, turning your workouts back up, turning your nutrition back up to where your, your degree is set and where your thermostat is set, right? Th that's, that's one option. Or the other option is your thermostat just goes down as you lose ability. And one of the other things that I thought was crazy is on the other side of the coin, which is where the majority of us want to be. And this is why you see those graphs when they say how to be successful and they go up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down is because our thermostat is, isn't changing and so it has to constantly readjust and we need to learn how to change our thermostat and change what our settings are and what our minimum settings are going to be. And what I mean by that is when people are really successful and they're doing really well and they've got their thermostat up, a lot of times what happens is you have this huge spike in momentum, this huge spike in success, but then slowly your body goes, well, I don't feel comfortable running at this high of a, of a temperature, right? Like my body doesn't feel right going this hard or working this well or doing this. And you start to self sabotage yourself back down to where your thermostat is set. And that's something that so many people do. And, and it's in so many different areas in their life, but health and fitness is a huge one, right? Like if, if you start training for a show and you were used to eating well, five days a week and working out a couple times a week, and that was where your thermostat is set, it's going to feel very awkward for you to maintain that high level of commitment to that one thing. But at the end of the, of the, whatever it is you're doing, if your thermostat goes up a degree and you add one or two habits that are going to change your, your thermostat to a little bit higher, that's how you operate at a higher success rate, right? And you can do this in any area of your life. But here's what I thought was the really cool part about this analogy was surrounding yourself with hotter people, surrounding yourself with people whose thermostat, and I don't mean, you know, like attractively hot, like I don't mean like find sexy people and hang out with them. I mean, surround yourself with people whose thermostat runs hotter than yours, because in turn, that's going to build your thermostat. And I touched on this in the last show, but one of the things that you have to do when you do this is you can't just talk the talk is you have to do it too. Because here's the problem is when you start surrounding yourself with hot people and people who run at a higher frequency and a higher temperature than you, what happens is very quickly is they're going to get to know you. You're going to become friends. You're going to be on their radar. They're going to see you. They're going to watch you. And if what you're doing isn't matching what you're saying and where you're trying to go, they're very quickly going to leave you behind because they don't want to be surrounded by people who are colder than them. So when you want to try to operate at a higher level, you have to find people that you surround yourself with that, with that are operating at that higher level. And then you have to in turn actually take the action to maintain that higher level of temperature. And that's going to help move your thermostat up. And it was a really, really cool analogy. I probably slaughtered it, but I hope you guys understand what I'm trying to say with that. And going into that, segueing into what I wanted to talk about next is the phrase that I hear constantly. I see it hashtagged all over Instagram um, and Facebook, and I just I see it everywhere. And it's know your worth, right? Like know your worth, know your worth. And here's the deal guys is your worth is your worth. And I'm going to get into that. Why? If you're broke, that's your worth. And if you're poor in an area, that's your worth. And I'm going to explain that to you in the next segment because I'm not trying to insult you, but you're going to want to stay tuned for this one. This is platinum fitness radio. I am your host, Aaron Nash coming to you live on BBM global network and tune in radio. Stay tuned. 
Essential Nutrients LLC is the brainchild of entrepreneur Barbara Burns. Inspired by a desire to help others, Barbara worked with a team of scientists to develop unique nutritional liquid supplements with the goal to improve the quality of your life. Glucosamine, zinc, and calcium are essential to well-being, and this is the focus of Essential Nutrients LLC. Whether you're a professional athlete, weekend warrior, student, business owner, or homemaker, Essential Nutrients offers products for everyone, including the family pet. And they're easy to take, no pills. Health requires commitment, exercise, a good diet, proper supplementation, and action. So take action today and get your supply of Essential Liquid Nutrients by visiting www.essential-liquids.com. Don't put off your health any longer. Take Essential products today and start to measure the difference. Unleash the obstacles that bind you with certified professional coach Joanne Charette, a master practitioner in energy leadership. Joanne can help you break through personal and professional barriers and guide you to a higher level of empowerment and fulfillment. Passionate and dedicated, Joanne engages with her clients on a mutual journey. Her dynamic energy will motivate you to move forward as you partner on a venture to greater results. Isn't it time to make a breakthrough and commit to live the life you deserve? Invest in yourself and let Joanne Charette be the catalyst to the realization of your your dreams by making them a reality. Based in Quebec, Canada, Joanne is also a space coach using social media and Skype to work with anyone anywhere around the world. Contact Joanne Charette today at 819-360-3266 or email her at actionrealization at live.ca. 819-360-3266. Now is your time. Welcome back to Platinum Fitness Radio. I am your host, Aaron Nash, coming to you live on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We're going to talk about your worth. I'm not going to try to insult you, but before I do, I have seen this now starting to blow up on my news feed of the video of Trump saying that teachers need to hold guns. If you guys didn't hear my Trump episode, go back a few episodes and listen to that because what he's doing now is exactly what I keep telling you that this guy does every time is he says outlandish stuff and then backs it down like 89% to get to where he actually wants. Now, I guarantee you Trump will not pass a law that allows teachers to carry guns in schools, but I guarantee you there's going to be some heavy school safety stuff coming up very, very quickly. But he's going to handle it the way he handles everything else, the way he wrote it in his book, the way he told you and scripted that he was going to do it in Art of the Deal. He's going to do that again, and you're going to start seeing this. And, and guys, I'm telling you, I'm not a prophet, but watch Facebook. It is going to blow up with videos of Trump talking about having teachers do guns, and you're going to see all the liberals go, oh, my God, it's a terrible idea. And then you're going to see all the rednecks talking about, yeah, America, teachers with guns. And then in like – Two months, he's going to pass a law that like allows her to be like security in schools. And that's what he wanted to begin with. But it's just going to be funny. So I want you guys to laugh and chuckle at this with me because it's going to happen. And we're all going to sit back and watch it. And he told you he was going to do this in your book, but none of you read. And that's why it's the idiots who posted on Facebook. So now that I've got that out of the way, let's go into your worth, knowing your worth and why your worth is your worth. Let's talk about that for a minute. So here's what I want to tell you guys. And this is relatable to health and fitness. So I'm going to try to relate it that way. If you're 100 pounds overweight and you talk about, oh, well, I know my worth and I know I'm better than that and I know I can do this and I know I can do that. Here's the truth of the matter is the worth that you give yourself in health and fitness is 100 pounds overweight worth or you wouldn't be there. Period. End of story. If you work at Walmart as a greeter, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. If that's your dream, do you boo-boo. However, if you want to sit there and hashtag know your worth and blah, 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 but then you post vile, ignorant stuff on social all day and you talk crap about your job and your employers and your managers and you talk about fighting and all this other stuff when you're like 30 something years old, that's your worth. I don't know how else to tell you that. Your worth is your worth. Whatever you're currently worth, you earned it. That's where you're at. Want to improve it? Go learn something. Want to improve it? Go add value to somebody. Want to improve it? Work more. It's one of the things that just blows my mind is when people say, oh, I know my worth and I'm better than this. No, you're not, or you'd be doing better than that. Period, end of story. There's, it's, not a, it's, it's not a gray area. 
Success is binary, period, end of story. If you think you're worth more, go out and do more, or you're not worth more. If you think you're worth more, but then you watch Netflix for seven hours a day, and you complain about making whatever it is that you're making, A, no one else cares. B, no one feels bad for you. And C, you just figured out your own worth. How do you feel? If you don't feel good about that, change it. If you do feel good about it, you won. And that's a win. And no one can tell you otherwise. If you like having 30 hours a week of work and making whatever it is you're making and living where you're living, then that's a huge win. And most people don't find the gratitude and the success and the happiness that you found. And I applaud you for that. But wherever it is you are, if you want more, you can't complain and then do the same amount of stuff because that's not how you increase your worth. Period. End of story. It's impossible. Okay. So you have to make that choice. It's either you can complain and do the same amount of stuff and no one's going to care and nothing's going to change. Or you can add more value, add more worth, add more education, add more hours, add more commitment to your goals. And you're going to move up and you're going to move forward. And you're going to find out that your worth is equal to what it is that you're putting in. And I don't ever want you to think that I'm talking down to you about this. I just don't waste words and I'm very blunt and I'm not very good with bedside manner. Right. It's just not my thing. So uh, that's why in the beginning of the show, when they introduced me, it's the weird guy who does the uh, the movie announced. And in this show, Aaron gives you his no crap on his approach coming to you on August 10th. Right. Like, like that's it's, it's the reason they say that is because that's how I do it. Like I don't advertise one thing and then coddle you and baby you and do it a different way. That's not how I live my life. So I'm not trying to talk down to you. I'm just saying wherever it is you are, that's your worth. If you don't like it, change it. If you want to yell at me, cool. My email is aaronnash20 at gmail.com. Or you can send your complaints to any local Burger King and they will send them my way. Now, let's talk about what I want to talk about next. Let's transition into the next segment, which is loyalty is the most undervalued resource. Guys, I have so much information on this topic from personal experience. And what I want to explain to you is Loyalty in today's society and in today's age is probably the most underappreciated and undervalued resource because people chase the quick buck. They chase the get rich, get rich quick. They chase the how can I do the least amount of work for the most amount of money? That's what everybody's looking for, right? Like the four hour work week, the two hour work day, the four day work. Like what? How do I do less and still make more money? Like that's everybody's goal, right? Here's the deal with that, though, is a lot of people will chase the quick buck and they'll change job after job. They'll go from like especially personal trainers in our industry. They go from gym to gym to gym, um, trying to get more clients, trying to get higher pay, trying to get more money, trying to do whatever it is that it is that they do. And in all reality, you're just pretty much going from entry level to entry level to entry level to entry level. And all that you jumping and hopping around to jobs makes you look like is unreliable and unloyal to anybody who hires people. Okay. And as somebody who looks through, I've looked through probably a thousand resumes over the last two years. I can tell you that one of the things that we all look for when all my management staff, when all, when, when they send me resumes, when I look through them, when they look through them is if you change jobs, like I change underwear, which is like once a month, uh, you're not very loyal. It doesn't show a good track record. It shows that you're chasing the quick buck and you can't go into your interview and say, yeah, I'm a hard worker. I show up on time. I go to work. I'm really good with this company, blah, blah, blah. But if you've got eight years at the same job, it shows that you were committed and find out the reason that you're not there anymore because we're going to ask. So, so again, be honest and communicate, but loyalty is like, that's the first thing I look for on resumes now is how long were they at a job? How long did they stay? And why after X amount of years did they want to leave? If it was three months and you're like, oh yeah, I left because me and the boss didn't get along. Okay, cool. But you did that for seven jobs. So maybe it's not the boss's problem. If you had seven bosses and you left them all early because they all sucked, you might as well go play the lotto because your odds are extremely good. Like, holy cow, you are like the luckiest human ever because I have a proposition for you. It's probably you. So, one of the things that I want to talk about is loyalty. And the reason that I think it's so important in all honesty is because you build relationships with people. You build a re- like a network of people that you're around. And if you're a good person, they're genuinely going to want to help you. And they're genuinely going to have your um, 
best interest at heart. And when you go from, you know, when it is time for you to step away from a certain job, they're going to be there to support you and they're going to give you a good recommendation and they're going to want you to succeed. Right. And that goes from, from owners to managers, to employees. It doesn't matter what your title is, you know, be loyal, put in some time, develop relationships, do a good job, have some integrity. And when you move on to a bigger, better job, you're going to have the backing from other people, right? Don't just chase the quick buck. Don't chase the quick dollar around because what you're going to do is you're going to end up making less and looking for more. And you're always going to look at everything as the grass is greener. And then you're going to end up in a situation where it's not like I have, I have a guy who used to work for me and I'm going to explain kind of his track record because it's unbelievable. Um, the dude changes gyms more than I change underwear. And we're going to talk about that when we come back. So make sure you stay tuned for that. We're also going to talk about some ego when we come back. This is Platinum Fitness Radio. I am your host, Aaron Nash, coming to you live on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Stay tuned. Hello, everybody. This is Coach Betty Louise, and I have a question for you. When is the last time you looked in the mirror and saw your amazing beauty and sexuality? 80% of women do not have a positive body image. 97% of women do not like something about their bodies, and over 10 million women have eating disorders. In addition, at least 40% of women are sexually repressed, and one in seven marriages are sexless. I've just completed a book called Healing with Pleasure Medicine. What I will teach you is what gets in the way of your ability to see your beauty, sensuality, and sexuality how to shift your perception to increase pleasure throughout your entire day. Okay, the place to find all of this information is CoachBettyLive.com. One more time, CoachBettyLive.com. Look forward to connecting. Animal lover, author, artist, and public speaker, Patricia Daly Life is a renaissance woman in her own right. A lover of animals from a young age, Patricia lives on a farm in Virginia and has rescued neglected thoroughbred horses, keeping them or finding them safe havens. She is also a published author, and her books document real-life experiences that she shares in her passionate stories, taking the reader around the world in a colorful kaleidoscope of life. An accomplished artist, Patricia Daly Life's oil paintings feature animals, portraits, stills, nature, and abstract, and she allows the brush to paint the image in an organic, natural way. A public speaker, Patricia is motivated to continually wonder about life and advocates for all of us to do the same and document our own unique history. To learn more about Patricia Daily Life, visit www.literarylady.com and www.patricialife.com or email her at pdlife at gmail.com. Welcome back to Platinum Fitness Radio. I am your host, Aaron Nash, coming to you live on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. So... I have a couple things for you. I have a spoiler alert for any of my clients. Uh, We're going to be announcing this Wednesday. Um, But one of the reasons that I've been in a abnormally less than chipper mood recently um, is there's a um, a, a gym who we have been working with um, one of their former former employees. And uh, they're really upset about it to the point where it's now becoming almost a legal issue. So we're going to take care of it next week, but we're going to do it to where we put them in the court of public opinion. Um, Because I don't know about you, but if I am in today's society, the last thing I would want to do is tell a foreign homosexual female that she can't go out and earn a living, especially if I was two old white people. But hey, you can run your gym however you want. And we're going to talk about that on Wednesday on Facebook Live. So I hope you guys tune in for that because that's going to be a good one. Uh, if you don't know my Facebook, it's facebook.com slash A-A-R-O-N-D-N-A-S-H. We're going to have a very interesting communicating talk where we discuss some things very calmly and professionally because that's how I handle most things in my life. But let's get back to loyalty because what I want to talk about is – One of the things that I always giggle at is, you know, I I used to have a trainer who worked for me who I feel like had it pretty good. It wasn't too bad of a life. And now it's gym hopping, gym hopping, gym hopping, gym hopping, gym hopping, trying to make half the money that I paid him. And he's almost out of gyms. I think he's down to like one other one left. And it comes down to that loyalty aspect, right? Is, you know, you can build a family, you can build a reputation, you can build a clientele. 
and they're going to support you. They're going to believe in you. They're going to want the best for you. Or you can be unloyal and you can hop and hop and hop and hop and hop. And then you lose value. You lose value. No one wants to follow you. No one cares. And everyone who's important sees right through it. They see that it's all a front. They see that it's all a fake because the actions don't match the talk. And that's something that I always have giggled at is when I see people doing exactly what we all knew they were going to do. And then people wondered why they were no longer with us. And then I was like a Bruno Mars song. Don't believe me. Just watch. And yes, I'm dancing in this chair right now because I think it's that funny. Uh, However, let's move on to the next thing, which is ego. Focus on what you do, not what you think you can do. And this is something that I struggle with all the time, guys, uh, is I constantly think that I could do everything better than anyone else could do it. And, and it's something that I have to constantly realize that I'm very good at like two things and that's pretty much it. And so one of the things that I'm currently working on myself is making sure that I'm self-aware and I'm not trying to overextend myself into areas that I'm not competent, right? I believe that I'm really good at two things, um, running gyms and helping people realize that they're worth more than they think they are. And I really think that those are my, my, my really my, my two strongest attributes and my two strengths. So everything that I do, I try to make sure that those two things are at the forefront because I know that if I venture out too much outside of that, I'm going to be playing out of areas where I think I'm good. And the problem for a lot of people is, uh, and I made this analogy to one of my clients we were talking about with nutrition, um, is if somebody gave you a perfect cake baking recipe, right? Like let's say you found like the best cake baker in the world and they gave you a recipe and you follow the recipe and guess what? You made an incredible cake and then you continue to just copy the recipe and do it. You would continue to make really great cakes, right? Like you're just following a recipe. And I had, I was lucky enough to be in the room with the cake, with the best baker of boutique gym cakes that I've ever met still to this day, which is Matt. He gave me the recipe on how to build successful fitness gyms, right? And fat loss gyms. He gave me that recipe. Now, while the more, while, while the way that we approach things may be slightly different, the recipe is still followed the same because it's worked every time that he's done it. And I watched him build it. I watched it evolve. I helped him as much as I could. And then I took that knowledge. I took that understanding. I moved to Southwest Florida and I did it myself. And I followed the recipe exactly with my own flair to it. And it was an incredible cake. And then we did it again. And then we're going to do it again because I know the recipe. Now here's what happens is a lot of people are going to see this and they're going to be like, Oh, well I know better and I'm going to do this and I'm going to add this and I'm going to put step four instead of step three. And I'm going to move step two to step six because I know what I'm doing and I'm smarter than the system and I'm smarter than the process. And when you do that, a lot of times you fail and you don't know why and you start blaming other things instead of the true root of the problem, which is you got your ego in the way, you got way too cocky and you screwed up and you messed up the recipe. And when the recipe works, guys, I always tell my clients this with nutrition. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? And, and same thing with, with, your, with your finances, with your career, with your business. If it ain't broke... Don't fix it. If someone gives you the recipe to bake the best cake in the world and you want to go bake cakes, go bake the recipe. Like, just follow it. And you're going to do great. And you're going to be fine. And that's the best part about today's society is information is readily available and shareable. And if you're doing things for the right reasons, the right people will come along and help you because they see that your heart's in the right place. And get rid of that ego part of it because you, you're like – I always laugh when I see people like uh, in business who are like, oh, I think I'm going to venture into real estate. And I just am like, why, why, why would you do that? Like, you know, nothing about that. Like, yeah, you were successful at one thing. It doesn't mean you're going to have any clue how to do a different industry. And I say it all the time. Like I literally go to businesses and I'm like, I could do this business better than they could. Now, while principally I probably could in certain aspects, I would end up focusing on the two things that I know what to do. Right. Which is, make people feel better than they, or make people believe in themselves more than they thought they did. But again, that doesn't really matter if I open a Verizon wireless store, right? Like if I open a Verizon wireless store and I go, Hey man, I really hope you know how worth it you are today. That's not going to help me sell cell phones. Cause I don't know anything about selling cell phones. Do I know things about sales and marketing and culture and teamwork and leadership? Yeah. 
But at the end of the day, I guarantee you the recipe to build a successful cell phone company is not the same recipe to build a successful gym. It is a very different recipe. And the steps that are taken are very, very different. Now, can the core values be the same and the way that you approach business and the way that you do business be the same from venture to venture to venture? Absolutely. But take your ego out of the way and focus on what you know you do and focus on following the recipe to success if you want to be successful. If somebody's figured it out, don't get cute. Like one of my favorite things is hundred pound overweight vegans. Like it's, it's one of my favorite things in life. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm vegan. No, you're hundred pounds overweight, but I'm vegan. Okay, cool. Do you want to be hundred pounds overweight or do you want to be vegan? Cause right now you, you can't have both. So you can do it our way. And we've helped hundreds of people lose 50,000 pounds in less than two years, or you can keep doing it your way. It's really up to you. And then once you have that conversation with people, you find out what their actual goals are, and then you see where they'll give a little bit and where you can make the program work for them. But anyway, guys, we got another segment coming up. I have some fun stuff for you coming up. Make sure you stay tuned. This is Platinum Fitness Radio. I'm your host, Aaron Nash, coming to you live on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Stay tuned. Hello, I'm Steve Fagan, and I'm president and CEO of Fagan Associates, but I'm also a life coach. I'm here to help you reach your dreams, goals, and objectives. As a life coach, it's my job to be your support, to be your teammate, to help you understand what is your dream, what is your life passion, and then together we work as that team to help you reach your specific goals. Life is worth living the best you can be. Working with a life coach, you're fulfilling those dreams and goals is your passion, and it's your way of living. Let me help you do that today. Let me help you really reach the best that you can be as a person and live the life you should be living. I'm Steve Fagan. I'm a life coach, and I'm here for you. Contact Steve Fagan at FaganAndAssociatesInc.com or call 1-800-239-2701. And I'll be glad to help you move forward to live the life of success. Reach your dreams, your goals, your objectives. We can do it together. Patricia Fayweather Harlow is passionate about the environment and conserving our natural resources. She's written a five-part book series for all ages called Rock with Rodney and Party with Perky to Preserve Wildlife, which brings awareness through these vibrant characters on preserving and protecting our national parks and historic landmarks. Harlow has launched a campaign to mobilize green supporters, informing a united front against big oil, big coal, and the Keystone XL pipeline. And she addresses the controversial practice of fracking in books four and five. She's determined to bring greater awareness to the dangers of drilling and running crude oil through pipelines that cut through pristine landscapes. And she empowers readers to take action in keeping America beautiful. To learn more about Patricia Fayweather Harlow and to purchase her books, visit www.patricia-fayweather-harlow.com. That's F-A-Y-E-R-W-E-A-T-H-E-R. And play your part in preserving the landscape that we all share and love. Oh, welcome back to Platinum Fitness Radio. I am your host, Aaron Nash, coming to you live on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Hey, guys, I got some really interesting stuff. And I was reading a... I was reading an article from some of the most successful people and, and, and what their definitions of success were, uh, because I wanted to talk about something that I really think is key going off the idea of loyalty and ego and knowing your worth and even the thermostat, right? Like I think they've all tied into one thing. And what I want to always do is I want to try to tie the show in and have a theme to it. And what's funny is it doesn't matter whether it was Warren Buffett, John Wooden, Mark Cuban, or Richard Branson. Um, all five of them really had the same definition or same value of success. And we've talked about it a lot today without actually saying it, but it's valuing relationships above all else. And your network is your net worth, right? Like you've heard that phrase cause it gets overused all the time. But one thing that I really truly think is beneficial is look at people from different industries, from different genres, from different time periods, from different success avenues and see what the common golden threads are, right? And if you can learn how to take a step back and try to pull the golden threads from people and from groups of people, that's when you're really going to start to learn what you need to focus on in order to take the next step in whatever it is you want to do, right? And I really think that it was cool that, you know, Warren Buffett, who obviously, if you don't know who that is, uh, I, 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 just stop listening. Um, Mark Cuban, John Wooden, some of the greatest human beings and, and most successful human beings of all time, especially in the last hundred years, um, they all valued relationships 
over income over anything like that. And they knew that if they built good relationships and they poured themselves into other people and tried to make the most for other people and be that thermometer that we talked about earlier and be loyal as a friend and not have their ego get in the way and give advice to the things that they feel comfortable to give advice to and build a relationship based on communication, which we talked about in the beginning. These are the things that make you successful is the, the lives you impact, the relationships you develop and the worth that you have. And this brings me back to another story guys is a couple weeks ago. Um, so I don't know if you know this, but we, we did it. We had a, the news do a documentary that it still hasn't come out yet. I'll let you know if it comes out and where it is. You can follow me on Facebook. I'm sure I'll post it. Um, but one of our clients was followed during our keto program because we did a 14 day keto program, uh, with the sole purpose of educating people on how to actually do a keto diet instead of just following the, uh, crap that was being thrown out on the internet. So we set them all up. They did two weeks. In two weeks, we had 450 people lose over 3,000 pounds in two weeks on a ketosis diet. It went very, very well, to say the least. Um, The reason I say 450 people is those were the reports that came in. We actually had like 650 people do it, but 450 of the people turned in their reports. And of those 450, they lost just over 3,000 pounds in two weeks. And one of the things that happened was I had to communicate because one of my, uh, my team members said something in a way that was perceived poorly for the relationship with the client. And luckily the client reached out to me and I reached out to my team member. And last week we even sat down together and we explained what we were talking about. We put together a plan for this client and we, we rectified the situation, but it, it took apologizing and it took valuing the relationship above being right. And I think that sometimes you can tell people things and the way that you say it might not be the best way to make that relationship move forward. Right. And I struggle, guys, if anybody struggles with how I word things, it is me. So I'm looking at myself in the mirror when I, when I'm, when I'm saying this to you, because this is something that I personally am working on every day is talking to people in the way that builds the relationship forward and in the way that they understand it. Now, for some people, me being super blunt, me being super straightforward and me using constant F words works very, very well for them. For other people, I've learned that coming to them from a humility approach, asking more questions, trying to lead them to where I'm coming from and trying to figure out exactly where they're coming from when they're speaking, I found that that way of communication works better for certain people as well. And it's something that I always work with on my management team is, is the way that you're saying things to people being interpreted in the way that would build a relationship better, because ultimately that's, what's going to make you successful long-term is the relationships that you build. Now you might not always agree with people. Like I had somebody today come up to me and say something about like, Oh, well, I wonder if you're, if you're, you know, you should, you should get a prenup. And I'm like, this coming from somebody who's like the angriest, loneliest human being I've met, I probably am not going to hold much clout in that. But I didn't say that. I just said, okay, you know, thank you for, thank you for telling me that. And, um, you know, it's not the first time I've heard that, uh, but I'm only going to get married once and it's going to be to Kelly and I love her and I'm not planning on it not working. So, you know, um, I know her heart and I know that she wouldn't screw over my staff and our ability to impact lives because she sees the amount of passion and care that I put into that. Um, and I know that there's not going to be some vendetta should something go wrong with the relationship. So, um, I'm not worried about that, but again, that's my personal relationship with her. And I know that we've had that conversation, right? And and that's a hard conversation to have guys, but you have to, and even when I talk to her, as opposed to when I talk to my team is I have a very hard time turning off my, the way that I communicate with her compared to my team, because with my team, like I'm the boss, I'm in charge. Um, you know, there comes a point where you can have discussions back and forth, but at the end of the day, when a decision has to be made, uh, I have the ability to veto that decision and to make it my decision because I signed the front of the check. And one thing that I've had to learn how to do with her is communicate vastly differently because I find myself not being able to turn that, that owner, that business mentality, that switch off, uh, when I speak with her and she doesn't deserve that switch. She deserves a teammate and a partner 
and uh, 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 the way that she builds a relationship with somebody and communicates with somebody is not the same. Now, do we have a lot of the same views and a lot of the same demeanor? And uh, are we oddly similar in a lot of ways? Yes, uh, very much so, or else we probably wouldn't be together. But um, when it comes to valuing relationships, you know, that's when your communication tools have to be change. And I really think that that's something that if people learn to do better is communicate and communicate with the intent of building the relationship, I think that that's going to move you forward. Because if it's good enough for Warren Buffett, if it's good enough for Mark Cuban, if it's good enough for John Wooden, if it's good enough for Richard Branson, well, damn it, it's good enough for me. Stay tuned, guys. We have one more segment coming up. This is Aaron Nash coming to you live on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Stay tuned. Intergenerational programming is uniting America due to the tireless efforts of Dr. Ramona Frischman. Retired from the Miami-Dade County Public School System, Dr. Frischman continues to develop intergenerational learning programs aimed to improve the lives of children, young adults, and seniors through unique strategies and public policy in order to establish a mutually supportive agenda. She views intergenerational programs as a resource for policymakers and the general public on economic, social, and personal initiatives that govern our society. Her work bridges the generational gap, providing many individuals the opportunity to explore areas of common ground and celebrate each other's diversity. Contact Ramona Frischman at RamonaLong at AOL.com or visit www.gu.org to learn more about intergenerational programming. Jenny Friend is a licensed marriage and family therapist and a certified clinical sexologist, commonly known as a sex therapist, with over 30 years of experience in the field of sexuality. She's been a researcher and teacher and is further trained in human development over the lifespan. She's also a published author and a radio personality. Her specialized training in lifespan developments means she can help individuals, couples, and families through difficult developmental phases. Her primary ways of working are through the tools of cognitive, behavioral, and psychoenergetics theories and techniques. Couples, individual men and women, and families are also welcome. She can meet in her office in Costa Mesa, California, or on the Internet through Skype at Jenny Friend MFT. Call 714-210-9200. You can also send an email from her website at www.centerforclarity.org. That phone number again is 714-210-9200. Welcome back to Platinum Fitness. I am your host, Aaron Nash, coming to you live on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Hey, guys, this is our final segment of the day. Um, I hope that the show kind of tied together last segment with the relationships talk. I think that I went very far on a lot of different angles. Uh, I tried to really, when I sat down and did the show, I sat there and I circled relationships in the middle and I said, okay, what makes a good relationship? Uh, how do we measure success? Because I read this art, that article on success and it was all these great people who all had pretty much the same definition. So I wanted to do a show on that and kind of figure out how to, how to play it. So I hope you guys got the common thread into that one. And I hope you see the value in it. And I hope that um, you understand that when I do these shows and I put them together, it's a learning experience for myself as well. And there's a lot of things that I say or do that might always not be portrayed or um, taken the way that they are meant to be said or taken. And if, you know, if you're ever offended by anything that I do say, um, you know what the worst possible scenario is, is you're offended. Um, And that's as far as I care. But uh, realistically, I I say that in all joking because – you know, everybody's going to have different beliefs and different uh, ways that they communicate, ways that they look at life, ways that they attack life. And that's totally OK. And I think one of the things that we have to learn is um, that everybody's going to be a little bit different and you're never, ever, ever going to please everybody. And that's OK. And honestly, the more impact you have and the more people that you impact on a daily basis, the more it's going to seem like – there's more people who don't agree with you and that's okay. You just have to remember the percentages, right? So if six people out of 1450 clients of mine, if six of them say they didn't like something I did, well, okay, that's like 0.001%, right? But if 600 say it, 
Well, then I might have to look in the mirror on that. And I think that that's something that a lot of people need to understand is that there's different ways to do things. You have to determine which way you want to communicate, which way you want to build relationships and how you want that success to be measured and how you're communicating to build value. Uh, guys, I'm going to try to bring on, I have two different guests that I'm trying to get on and we're working out logistics over the next couple of weeks. Uh, one is from an awesome internet company. And the reason I want to bring someone who does uh, internet company and who started it from scratch and does very, very well. The reason I want to bring someone like that on is because I know a lot of people that I deal with on a daily basis are, are younger and they're entrepreneur ish. And I say that because they want to start their own business or they want to do their own thing online. And so I really want to talk to him and have him come on and explain his story, explain what he does, explain what he built because he's a phenomenal, phenomenal business person. And I have access to a lot of really great ones now, now that I'm in this uh, mastermind with two extremely, well-known people. Um, I'm, I'm not exactly sure how much I'm allowed to say about that, so I can't, but, um, I'm going to try to bring them on. And then I'm also trying to bring on a finance guy. Uh, I, he's going through the, the flagpole right now of trying to see if, if his company is okay with him going on because there's some red tape apparently. And obviously you have to be very careful with what you say. Uh, if, if you're in the finance field with what words come out of your mouth and the way that you suggest things, because you can't give, advice and there's a lot of there's there's a lot of red tape but what i really want to do is i know that a lot of people including myself uh i've had to learn how to try to be better with my money pretty much by reading and talking to people and i'm hoping that maybe he can add some value and give you guys some basics if you struggle with budgeting finance where to put your money um what are some good safety tips what are just some general best practices that successful people use um so i'm trying to get him on here for that and as soon as i find out one way or the other i'm going to bring him on otherwise i might have to go a different route i have another guy in mind who listens to the show all the time that i know would be more than willing to do it but again i know there's a lot of red tape when it comes to financial discussion so but i do want to bring you guys that value because it's something that i know i'm going to learn from and again, remember, as I said before, the show's all about me and my ego. So I want to learn and I want to get better. Uh, but I just wanted to thank you guys again for another awesome, awesome episode this week. Here's one of the really, really cool things with this show is I've had the chance to meet a lot of good people and talk to a lot of people about some really uh, great conversations and learned a ton. That's my goal for the show is to, to learn and to add value. So again, if you guys had an excellent experience today, you guys learned something that's going to add value to you. If you wouldn't mind throwing me a heart, shout me out on Facebook, doing something nice, maybe, you know, sending me an edible arrangement, whatever you want to do is totally fine with me. Uh, this is Aaron Nash. This is Platinum Fitness coming to you live on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. We will see you guys next week. This has been Platinum Fitness with your host, Aaron Nash. Whether you need the bare facts of how to eat well or the motivation to put that knowledge into action, Aaron gives it to you straight right here on Platinum Fitness. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.